Hello, welcome everyone to my YouTube channel. Today we in this talk we are going to discuss about the types of biomaterials and its synthesis. First, we are going to know about the about the discovery of biomaterial. First biomaterial is discovered by the professor Larry Hench in 1960 at the University of Florida that is 45s5 bioglass it is a multi component glass with the following composition that is 45% silica dioxide 24.5% sodium oxide 24.4% calcium oxide and 6% p2o5 we all know that a bone is consists of 60 to 70% calcium and phosphate and this is this picture showing that how the interfacial bonding of glass particle with the host tissue take place there are types of biomaterials there are four type of biomaterials that is bioactive glass glass ceramics bioceramics and fourth one is composite material composite material we are going to discuss in our later slides and uh, we are going to discuss today about the bioactive glass glass ceramics and bioceramics composite we can understand by the name that is mixture of one or, or two or more so it is a mixture of biomaterial and the polymeric matrix which led to this gel like thing that is scaffolds we synthesize and we will discuss it later on synthesis of biomaterial we synthesize the uh, biomaterial with the sol gel technique this is the best technique to synthesize the biomaterial we take tos as a precursor of silica dioxide distilled water di is act as a distilled water one molar hno3 act as a catalyst or a gelifying agent tp precursor of p2o5 calcium nitrate is a precursor of calcium oxide and chromium nitrate non hydrate is a precursor of chromium oxide then we mix the solution a and b and sol formation take place further aging for 2 days we can see the gel formation take place and further calcination of this gel at 700 degree celsius for 5 hour led to the formation of our sample now we going to discuss about the bioactive glass glass ceramics and bioceramics what is the main difference structurally here from xrd data we can see the bioactive glass has a morphous and for glass ceramics we have seen that the first the bioactive glass that the amorphous region and after heating at different transition temperature that is 600 700 700 700 the crystalline phases start to develop whereas in bioceramics we got crystalline phases how this bioactive glass formation take place when we synthesize the this sample and we rapidly cool this sample which led to amorphous phase not able to synthesize a crystalline phase due to rapid cooling further in glass ceramics first the amorphous data bioactive glass is formed and further heating at different transition temperatures led to formation of glass ceramics with the crystalline phases whereas in bioceramics there is a slow cooling of sample and led to the crystalline phases of crystalline phases formation here in bioactive glass slow rate of apatite formation glass ceramics intermediate apatite formation and the bioceramics has a faster rate of apatite formation why we considered the sol gel is a better technique because it is it produces a samples that is highly porous at low processing temperature that is 6 to 700 degree celsius samples with a high surface area high degradation rate biocompatible and high rate of apatite formation now we are going to discuss about the formation of hydroxy apatite layer here on immersion of bioceramics in spf solution the calcium ion release take place with the entrance of hydronium ion into silica matrix which led to formation of sinanol group with the release of salicylic acid further led to condensation of sinanol group which is indicated by the blue layer on the bioceramic surface and led to migration of calcium and phosphate ions and further led to the amorphous calcium phosphate which converted into crystalline calcium phosphate layer 
with the absorption of hydroxyl ions so this is the end of our talk and thank you guys for listening to my video please subscribe and like my channel for more updates thank you